we're back. Justin just opened up his bottom desk drawer and pulled out a stash of chocolate double drunk cookies. I hope my roommates don't listen to this podcast because I'm definitely hiding them from them. These cookies are beautiful. <laughs> mm. There's like files in there and all this important stuff and just on top is just a big old thing of cookies. Uh huh. I wasn't expecting Priorities, man. You gotta protect what's important. We really just took a break because Justin wanted cookies. Well, I had to go pee. You. But, <laughs> so there's that. But, yeah, this cookie's pretty good. Last time on this podcast, oh, yeah. we talked about some Star Wars stuff. We did. We talked about the games that we were playing, so we're not going to do that again. Right. Um, and we talked about... Boba Fett sucks. Yeah. Now, Boba Fett's dead. So is Darth Maul. Gosh dang it. They're both dead. Um, one of the things I want to talk about uh, is continuing along the theme of Star Wars, but kind of shifting away from the canon controversy. Just kind of looking at the new movie. <laughs> I'm enjoying this cookie. Don't look at me like that. I love the cookie. It's so good. Like, oh, so good. And it's gone. Mmm. I'm chewing. I'm chewing. Now we're narrating. Now we're narrating what's going on. Alright, um... So, apparently, Mark Hamill almost died. Yeah, he did. Apparently. He was also like, 80. I read this today. Um, how old is he? Is I he like, 80 know. now? I mean, how old is he in Star Wars? That was 30 years ago. Wars, 40 years ago. 30 to 5 That was 40, ago. I mean, 79, I think, is when the movie came out. So, 30. Yeah. You know he was the voice of Joker in the Arkham games? Yeah, he's the voice of Joker in almost every animated series, yeah. too. I'm glad that Mark Hamill still has work, even though they don't like to show his face. Yeah, he definitely, he's a uh, very successful voice actor for a lot of different cartoons, uh, animated series. So, yeah, uh, he almost died, apparently. Uh, they were filming on a, apparently a hilly location, I believe. I don't know if it's the location I'm going to talk about in a second uh, or not. But, apparently he, like, started, he, like, tripped or something and started falling down the hill. And like, while they're filming for the new Force Awakens movie. Yes, for the new movie. And apparently, if one of the... Was it cameraman or, like, stagehand or whatever? Uh, if he hadn't been paying attention and thought quickly, Mark Hamill would be dead, apparently. That's that's what I read. It's on the internet, so you know you can trust it. Um, that's because Mark Hamill's bones are fragile. When he touches the ground, they just all break. I mean, I don't think he's that old. I mean, Harrison Ford's definitely older than Mark Hamill. Yeah, look at him. He, I mean, but look at him. He probably sells a six-pack. Uh, who? Oh, yeah. Harrison Ford? Harrison Ford? Yeah. He's, uh, he's gonna live forever, I think. I mean, he, he crashed Just a plane. Just Star Wars He video. crashed a plane. I also and believe he was fine. that he, uh... And he was, like, 70. A long time ago, when I was still in the Boy Scouts, there was mm-hmm. a story about a Boy Scout that was lost in the woods. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was like, he was almost on oh, Eagle Scout, so he might have been a Life Scout. And, uh, he used his belt buckle to signal... Uh, passing by plane, mm-hmm. and it was Harrison Ford's plane. Yeah. And Harrison Ford saved him. Yep. I've heard of that. I'm like, this is intense. This was also when I was in Boy Scouts. So my dad's like, you can meet Harrison Ford if you <laughs> stay in Boy Scouts. Just go get lost in the woods, <laughs> son. That's a good idea. I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, I like Indiana Jones. There you go. So, uh, that happened. Mark Heimel apparently almost died. Almost died. Also, there's some controversy around the location of the... Most recent filming that I think is like extra scenes that they're like trying to sneak in before the movie actually releases. Uh, there's a location, I believe it is in Ireland, that is an island off the coast. And it's one, it's one of those national heritage sites that is protected. Um, and so it had to be approved by like the Minister of the Interior or something. Uh, I can't remember exactly. Ministry of the Interior Decorating. Something like that. Uh, and apparently it got approval, but the minister got a lot of flack for this decision because... A lot of hateful tweets. Yeah, a lot of hateful tweets, uh, lots of anger within the environmentalist people and the, uh, just all those people who care about that type of stuff. And... Why was this island so special? Well, first off, it is, I saw a picture and it is a gorgeous island. Uh, exactly what you think of when you... Think of Great Britain and the the coast coastline of Great Britain with the cliffs and, and that just uh, rich greenness that is so. Uh, I feel like I'm giving a commercial for tra- traveling to, U- Travel the UK. to the UK. Um, which I mean, Ireland, I guess, isn't the UK. 
technically, because it's its own country. Probably, yeah. Northern Ireland is part of the UK. Regardless, I'm on a tangent. Uh, so it's this little island, and on this island there's a monastery that has been around since, like, the 1300s. A Jedi temple. Um, and so they're, yeah, basically a Jedi temple. Um, so a lot of people are worried that the filming at this island, which is a very small island, is going to ruin the natural beauty of the island. Apparently there's also some rare animals that live on this island. Some birds or something. Uh, and so they're, they're worried that it will do that. It will hurt the ecosystem and potentially could damage the island. So that's kind of the controversy behind it. My thought is I love Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars can do no wrong. So I don't see how that could ever be wrong. But uh, there it is. Controversy with more Star Wars stuff. Um, definitely looking forward to Episode 7. I The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens. I am... Is... Time out. Yes, is go. Rogue Squadron? Rogue... With the new Star Wars Rogue movie, is that going to be Episode 8? No. Or is that going to be Episode 7.1? That is going to be Episode... 3.8 in the storyline. Okay. Uh, and what I mean by that is the location of that movie is in between episode 3 and 4. Okay. They get the Death Star plans. Okay. That's the movie. It's getting the Death Star plans. Oh. With Rogue Squadron. So right before the f- episode, episode four. 4. Yes. And there are no Jedi in the movie from what I've been told from what I read. Uh, and there's no lightsabers? It's... They're viewing it more as a war movie than a Jedi type action movie. It's, Tom Hanks gonna be in it. It's, I hope so. He Gosh, a it's a real good, good war movie. Dude, he would be the best general ever, or like <laughs> colonel. You know, walking through war torn indoor, trying to get the battle plan. Tom Hanks as Buzz Lightyear. He's got to find that special someone. <laughs> Star Command, come in, Star Command. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, <laughs> Rogue... There appears to be no what? intelligent life form. <laughs> <laughs> see, and you said you didn't like Disney movies. <laughs> this is a great Disney movie. I want to see a Star Wars war movie where Tom Hanks is Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> <laughs> That's my... Oh, man. I, I, I would love it, but not with Star Wars attached to it. <laughs> Please, no God. Please help us. Oh, gosh. Um... Yeah, so Rogue One is... It's a heist war movie? It is a war-type movie. That's what I know. Uh, the cat, the main is a lead, is a female. Main lead is a female. Um, it's going to focus around Rogue Squadron. Tammy but Hanks. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, uh, Tammy Tom, Hanks as both Yeah, Tom Hanks' sister. <laughs> Tammy. Tammy. Tammy <laughs> Hanks. She works for uh, UPS. And, uh... Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, the she, she got... She she got stuck in the rainforest once. And had to befriend a rugby ball. And had to amputate something <laughs> with a sword. Not you're, a... You're I'm going... Oh, this is way this too deep. <laughs> too many castaway references. <laughs> so little time. Oh. Uh, yeah, so... Star Wars Rogue. That's gonna be in between three and four... Star Wars Episode 7, obviously 30 years after Return of the Jedi. Obviously 30 years, obviously. yeah. I mean, Who doesn't know that? Well, I mean, it's the it's basically the amount of time since the movie came out is the distance between the stories. That's cool. Which works, because then all the characters aged, and they don't have to do anything fancy with it. They just leave them how they are, which is great. They don't have to de-ageify anybody. They don't have to do it in Ant-Man. <laughs> or in Terminator, the newest Terminator. Oh, yeah. Ant-Man it was really okay. Terminator, I didn't see. Terminator Genesis, but I assume it wasn't very good. Yeah, it was, it was right. I, I was I, not the impressed. The age of fine, I'm talking specifically. Yeah, oh, yeah, that was, it was a little bit awkward. I mean, you could tell, definitely tell it's computer generated. I mean, they did it in Terminator Salvation as well, which came out What's the worst before. Terminator movie? Uh, yeah. So, I'm excited for Star Wars. And Battlefront, I'm so excited for Battlefront as well. I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but I don't care what y'all say. I don't care... That you've read something that you this feature is not going to be in there. And now your expectations are all blown out of the water. I love Battlefield games, and I, if all they do is reskin Battlefield Three or Battlefield Four and put Star Wars stuff in there, I'm gonna love it. I, that's all. That's all it takes to entertain me with Star Wars is give me a blaster. Let me go shoot stuff. So, 
I don't want to get into a huge debate about that unless you really want to. No, we've done it before. We have. But I have low expectations for it, so I'm not going to buy it. You uh, have very high expectations for it. So, so high that you already I pre-ordered. already have bought it. Like so. you bought all of it already. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see who's right and who's wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's that's my Star Wars rundown. I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, how interested are you in comics, Tony? Star Wars comics specifically. Less interested than uh, than you. Specifically. Well, that's pretty I've easy never to do. Given it any thought, you never given it, and I don't think I will. Oh. I did get no. Wait, I got a loot crate once, and I got a free Star Wars comic in it. Yeah, I'm like this is kind of cool, and I might borrow some of yours, but I'm never gonna buy them. Gotcha. Fair enough. I got into Star Wars Legacy, which is a Dark Horse comic graphic novel series. Um, it's about twelve graphic novels. They're back there. There's lots of them. You see, them? it's the white ones. Back there in the very <laughs> corner. Uh, there are quite a few. Really enjoyed the storyline. Of course, now it doesn't matter because it's not canon, but it's kind of a cool story. You hear that, Disney? You suck. Yeah. Gosh dang it, Disney. I mean, it'll be okay. We love Disney. <laughs> we love Disney. Give us tickets to the movie, Give please. us free <laughs> tickets to yep. opening night. I will take off I'm, of my job. I pledge my allegiance to Disney. And to the... Media Empire for which it stands. <laughs> oh, man. One Nation Under Walt. To Infinity and Beyond. beyond. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. Oh, boy. Oh, Good boy. Old Tammy Hanks. Tammy Hanks making an appearance. We should get Tammy Hanks to be a guest star on our, our podcast one of these days. Sure. I, I, I'll text her. I have her number. <laughs> I don't. Well, you're you're back in this hole again, aren't you? I, I dig holes. I dig holes. So about these graphic novels. So graphic novels so that in. are good. Uh, I like I said in the last podcast. If you were listening, following through the Darth Vader. Series. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! If you're watching these in reverse order. <laughs> yes, if you do this backwards, uh, which is funny because we're talking about Star Wars. They did it backwards. Four, five, six, one, two, three. Huh? Okay. Not so great. Again, holes. Um, the comic comics are good. They're very good quality. Um, I feel that they aren't... They're much more approachable than the, the Dark Horse comic, at least the series that I was reading, um, for Outsiders. Uh, I mean, part of that, I think, has to do with the fact that we're dealing with characters that people recognize. Um uh, the legacy graphic novel series that I read is way in the future of the Star Wars Extended Universe Legends. Um, and so it had characters... I mean, Luke is in it a little bit, but generally it's it's like the descendants of the Skywalkers. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Who is Luke Mary? Well, that's a, that's a whole thing. Mary, Her name is Mary... Uh, not Mary Jane. That's, that's Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Um, <laughs> what, what is it? Because Han and the princess get together. Obviously. And Luke and Jar Jar? <laughs> um, or does Luke have another twin sister? It's Mara gets? Jade. That's what it is. Mara Jade, not Mary Jane. I mean, Mara Jade. It's the same thing. It is essentially the same thing. Uh, except for Mary Jane is way cooler than... Well, that's not true. Is Mara Jane... Mary redheaded? Jane is way more attractive and the relationship type than M- Mara Jade or Mara Jade. Mara Jade is like super sketchy kind of uh, yeah, also redheaded. Have, also redheaded. Yeah, so definitely a Mary Jane reference. Uh, yes. I believe she was an Imperial agent who then like turned to the well, just like went against the Emperor. Yeah, yeah. Emperor's Hand. She did a bunch of crazy things, killed a bunch of rebels, kind of an evil character, and then tries to kill Luke. Luke's but like, oh, you're kind of hot. Then they kind of fall in love. It takes a while. It's not something that happens, like, immediately. Uh, it's like she's a recurring character love in the extended universe. And as you can tell by looking here, uh, there are she's in a lot. And then they have a kid together named Ben Skywalker, who... <laughs> is kind of a cool guy. 
and I believe she dies eventually. So, so many spoilers I'm giving you, but it doesn't matter because it's not canon. But we still love you, Disney. But we still love you, Disney. Give us free things, please. Um, yeah. Love us back. Yeah, man, there, there are so... I'm just, like, thinking... Now I'm back on the canon again. There are all these, like, alien invasions from, like, other universes that happen. That are really cool or that are kind of iffy? There, there are some cool concepts within the books, but I, I just... I could not feel... I didn't feel like it was the same. Because the Empire is so, as the bad guy, the Empire is so iconic of yeah. the evil. It's like the Nazis, right? Like that's I, everybody always compares the Empire to being like space Nazis. I mean, stormtroopers. They're stormtroopers. I mean, that's literally the term that Hitler had for his first guard that he tried to take over the uh, German Weimar Republic with. Uh, so they're very iconic, and I I feel like it makes sense that there would be this oppressive, huge government. And then you fight it, and everybody loves that theme because that's a theme we see all the time in history. It's something that, like, as Americans, we did that once, right? Great Britain, we saw them as oppressors. We rose up against them. We rebelled. It was like a rebellious spirit. We moved right? out. We, we, we uh, moved out, and then they tried to keep... We moved out, and they're like, hey, where's the rent? And we're like, we don't have it. Go away. Yeah, stop taking our rent. And then <laughs> they came over here with a bunch of soldiers. Keep your we, nasty team. We beat them like a drum with a bunch of pitchforks and... And there was an assassin there. There was, apparently. And he was half Native American, That's half right. British. And the Templars were there. So, the the bad guys in the extended universe, like, the, there's this invasion called the Yuzhan Vong. And they're, like, from that another times. galaxy. And they invade, and they have all these, like... Force powers, but at the same time, they have, like, they eat worlds. Like, they keep... Star Wars also, the extended universe, repeats the idea of, oh, we can destroy a planet with a, with a super weapon. So, like, there's... That's the point of the Death Star. Uh, yeah, but they don't keep making the Death Star. They just find other ways to do it. So, like, the Yuzhan Vong had these things called world eaters that would terraform a world into what a was hab- habitable, habitable for them. Not a cupcake. That would be fun, though. I would oh, love yeah. to eat a huge cupcake. Big old cupcake. I would die if I ate that much. But A planet-sized cupcake? What, yes. What if there was like a mining company that mined cupcakes? the cupcakes from the planet and made money off it? I want to be a cupcake miner. New job, new goal in life, long-term goals. Um, <laughs> so they like invade and there's like all this stuff. And then the Empire and the, the Galactic Alliance, I think is or the New Republic, get together and they, like, fight off the Yuzhan Vong. And before there, there's, like, this group that comes in called, like, the Susi Ro or something. I can't remember. They're, like, all robotic-type people and they force... The lower half of Darth Maul. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Darth Maul's dead, gosh dang it. He didn't come back. We keep bringing that up. Oh, my gosh. Getting me all frazzled over here. All worked up. I'm all worked up now. So, anyways... Star Wars is Star Wars. Gotta love it. Not everybody loves it. Specifically your roommate. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, so, having movie night, had a bunch of friends over, <laughs> voting on movies, and the majority of people that are my friends like Star Wars. So, everyone was like, oh, it's a prerequisite. so-and-so hasn't seen Star Wars yet. Oh, awesome, let's watch Star Wars so that she can see it for the first time. Well, guess what my roommate does? Votes for the notebook. <laughs> with the other male in our friend group. <laughs> so all these girls are voting for Star Wars. Yeah, I, four. it was so weird. And your roommate and one other guy vote for the notebook. Exactly. Um, and then it, Nicholas Sparks' notebook. We're, we're stereotyping pretty heavily, but I feel like there's math behind that. And more guys like Star Wars than girls. Sorry, girls. I don't know. Well, I feel maybe. like more guys dislike the notebook than girls like the notebook. Because Probably. I agree with that. Did you end up watching the notebook? We didn't. Did you watch anything? We watched Star Wars Episode 4. And he had to suck it up. <laughs> I was just so disappointed. Then he went to his room and watched the notebook by himself. Well, I think it has to do with the fact that he likes one of the girls. And the girl wasn't really excited to watch Star Wars. She didn't vote for it. So he was like trying to find something she would like. He definitely has some like... Ulterior motives. He had some some sketchy stuff going on in the background, but that's all right. That, that's all right. Sometimes you gotta do. I, what you gotta I wish do. him all the luck with that. So, 
that's just all I got. That's all we got. So uh, I think I I don't know anything else about Star Wars right now. I'm sure I'll bring something up before the, the movie comes out, and then when the movie comes out, I don't know if I'm going to be able to talk for three days. So I'll be so blown away by how awesome it is. Be speechless for three days. I'll be days. speechless. Hopefully, and my expectations are so high. J.J. Abrams, if you do not meet my expectations, I'm going to be so disappointed. I'm going to smite you down. I'm going to call you... This has been <laughs> I'm going to throw you down that hill that Mark Hamill fell He's going to be Jar Jar Abrams, not J.J. Abrams. That's been circulating on the internet, though. I can't even claim that, but I'm totally <laughs> game with that. That's not my old joke. I'm on board with that. Copyright infringement. Copyright. That. Well, this is, this is a parody, right? You can do parodies anyway. I don't know. I don't know. Copyright laws. Da, da. So, um, what I didn't talk about last episode, part one, is I've been playing a lot of the MGS5, Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. The Phantom Pain! You don't even know it's pain, but it's there. Which was, uh, Ground Zeroes was a prequel to this. It was the $45 game that you bought, um, which was only one level, and it was a prequel to this one. Big dumb. Big dumb game. Really frustrating. Oh, I got it for smart. free on PSN Network. Played it, decided that it, I had a lot of fun, was frustrated that there's only one level. Um, watched a couple people on Twitch play The Phantom Pain, decided I would go out and buy it the next day. So far, I've been blown away. It's literally fantastic. Like, I know it's the PS4, and the PS4 already looks really good, but there's so many good, like, graphics in the game. There's so much... It's an open-world game. You have uh, two different places to play. There's Afghanistan, mountainous region, deserty, sandstorm. Oh, there's real time weather. Mm. So like deserts come in. That's nice. Uh, it gets cloudy. Um, so like when it's cloudy, if you're in the shadows, people just can't see you as well. So when it's cloudy, it helps you like that. Sandstorms come in. Obviously there's limited visibility. You can't hear as well. Yeah. So you can just run around and nobody can really hear you. Um, the That's second nice. place, which I just got to is Africa, the Angola region, which is mm. on the West coast. Um, it's the big oil refinery region of Africa. I only know that because one of my family members works in the oil industry. There you go. Otherwise, I wouldn't know. But it's very jungly. It's like what you'd expect Africa. There's like shanty towns, mm. um, jungle-ish. Um, jungle-ish. 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 I haven't spent a lot of time there yet, but it's fun. Um, it's just open world game. Like I'm, That's not a big spoiler either because when you get the game, there's a big map on the inside. One side is Afghanistan, one side's Africa. So it's not like, oh, I'm going to Africa. I didn't mm-hmm. know that. But if you get the game, you open up the map, you're like, oh, Africa, Afghanistan. Awesome. There you um, go. It takes off immediately where the uh, Ground Zeroes ends. Mm-hmm. And by immediately, I mean nine years later. <laughs> 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 because uh, Snake is in a coma for nine years. So things are going on. Oh, wow. Um, one of the premises of the game is that uh, Snake doesn't really have an allegiance to anybody anymore, so he and Ocelot and Kaz Miller, who are all previous characters from the previous games, they're building their own nation of uh, mm-hmm. private forces. Their own, their own private military force. Um, they have a they bought an oil rig out in the middle of the ocean, mm-hmm. and then they they expand that throughout the game. You can expand that. You can build expansions to it, uh, like a, a combat facility, a medical facility. All these things. Um, yeah. So, literally, a, a nation. They're building a nation yeah. outside in the ocean for private forces, which then they get hired out. They get contracted to go do things. Yeah, what's what's the nation called? Uh, Outer Heaven, hmm. I believe. Interesting. The, the, the place itself is called Mother Base, hmm. but their nation, which they're trying to build, is called Outer Heaven. Um, and Ground Zeroes, which was nine years before this, it was some French name, but I don't speak French, and I can't remember what it's called. Um, so they're doing that um, you get sent to Afghanistan because like I said you wake up in a coma these people are trying to kill you they're, the evil corporation is called Cypher Cypher um, so you get news that Cypher is in Afghanistan this all takes place during the Cold War mm. so this is right after Russia invaded Afghanistan or uh, like the US put missile launchers in Afghanistan or in the Middle East it's in Turkey yeah, to get close to Russia. So mm-hmm. Russia, like, invades Afghanistan. Yeah. So there's Russian sh- soldiers all over Afghanistan. Which is really cool is when you first start, like, obviously everybody's speaking either Afghan, either speaking Russian yeah. or whatever they speak in Afghanistan. Mm. 
So you go and uh, you when you sneak up on someone, you can grab them. Yeah. You can interrogate them to get information like yeah. about like, oh, there's a gun emplacement over here. There's a this guy is, has a special skill, or uh, I hid some diamonds over here. Um, or you can ask him where everybody else is, and sometimes they'll tell you where everybody else is in the camp. Mm-hmm. You can uh, knock him out so he's asleep. Well, he's like stunned but asleep, yeah. or you can kill him. Um, so generally, what you do is you sneak up on somebody, you get in, you get information out of them, and then you knock him out, and then you can Fulton people. And the Fulton people is essentially it's like a very similar to the Dark Knight in Batman mm-hmm. when Batman's in Tokyo. And he just grabbed the Asian guy. Yeah. And it jumps out the window and he throws up that big balloon. Yeah. And a plane comes by and sweeps him up. Oh, that's awesome. Literally, that happens in the Phantom Pain. What, what do you get for doing it that way? Is there a bonus for that? or? Um, everything that you Fulton then goes back to Mother Base. So uh-huh. you increase your ranks that way. Oh, interesting. Um, so every non-playable character, every enemy, has specific ranks. Specific skills that they're good at, and once you level up your, like, telescope, yeah. your, yeah, your telescope, it tells you what their ranks are, so it goes from E, which is the lowest, all the way to S++, which is the highest, mm-hmm. so E, D, C, B, A, S, S+, plus, S++. Plus plus. Um, so in the beginning, you find really low rank people, you can, uh, you scope in on them, it tells you what their ranks are, mm-hmm. you sneak up on them, you get some intel out of them, and then you... Knock them out, you fold in them, you send the balloon up, and it shoots up, which is a really funny animation, yeah. just in general. Like, The Phantom Pain is a really serious game, but there's also some really funny moments where, mm-hmm. like, uh, Konami takes itself really seriously with this, and Hideo Kojima took himself really seriously, but there's also, like, funny things that happen. Yeah. So that's, that's just a fun game to play in general, but you fold people up, they go to the base, if they're really, if they're, like, <clears throat> really against your cause... You'll put them in the brig, and then after, a, like, a week or two, they'll come out of the brig and be like, oh, well, I guess he's really, is doing his job. Like, essentially, the premise behind it is... Are you recruiting <clears throat> people through yeah. that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I assume you just got some, like, valuable intelligence from them or something. Well, there's both. Like, the premise is that nine years ago, you had this, you had this private military force. Yeah. Um, um, and then it got disbanded, so now all these PFs, these private private forces, mercenaries, are being recruited out by the Russian government. Mm. So they're all in Russia. Makes so sense. sometimes when you fold on them, they're like, oh, well, I used to work for Big Boss, so now I'm going to work for him again. And some people are like, oh, Big Boss is a legend. I don't know who this is. So you kind of have to prove yourself to them. Yeah. Um, so once you prove yourself, you're like, oh, I'm definitely going to work for you. And then Gosh. farther on in the game, you get to fold people, so you get to bring them in, and then you're just, your new nation gets known. So people are like, oh, well, I'm going to volunteer for that. So at the end of every mission, it'll be like, oh, you fought on this, you extracted this many people, you got this many volunteers. Yeah. They'll have different skill sets, they'll have all this other stuff. Yeah. Um, I like that. I like that you can build up your forces by choosing not to kill people. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, there's Fultoning, Fultoning, Fultoning? Using the Fulton is just really fun. Use the force, Luke. You, uh, <laughs> you get buddies in this game. The first one you get is... Uh, is a horse. Oh, the new military force that Snake is part of is called mm-hmm. Diamond Dogs. Diamond Dogs? <laughs> um, they made of diamonds? No. Are they strong like diamonds? No, they gave an explanation as to why they call it Diamond Dogs. It's just like, because they're unyielding and they're powerful and they can't be broken. Interesting. Um, so you get D-Horse, which is the first buddy you get. You get to ride that around Afghanistan and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. The stealth is really fun. Um... There's side missions that flow really well, and there's main story missions. And I think the best thing about side missions is they're, uh, if you're in a story mission mm-hmm. and you go across an area that has a side mission, it'll alert you. And it'll be like, hey, there's a side mission here. You can go and do that side mission in the middle of your story mission. Nice. Um, a lot of the side missions are like, extract these prisoners, because prisoners have very specific stats, too. Yeah. So it's like... Do they join you, too? If you... Yeah. Save yeah. them. Mm-hmm. So it's like, extract these prisoners, uh... Uh, a lot of the side missions are, like, the mercenary missions. Mm-hmm. So there's, like, other people out in the world that are like, oh, these guys have heavy heavy weapons, so you need to take out these heavy weapons or take out these heavy military guys. Mm-hmm. So you can choose to either kill them or you can extract all of them. 
Nice. Which is really cool. Um, because while you're a mercenary group, you're also in for your own self-interest. So right. if you have to kill somebody that has... Good skills. Good skills, you can extract them instead. Right. That's where it kind of, like, the brig comes in. Yeah. So they go to jail, and then eventually they're like, oh, well, you guys are actually doing really well. And, like, you're doing good for yourself. Yeah. And because I'm a mercenary, I do for what's best. Yeah. Do it for money. Mm-hmm. Um, story missions are really cool. Um, there's a big difference between side missions and story missions. And the fact that story missions, all of them are, you get a ranking at the end of all of them. They're all, like, episodes. They're all, like, little mini-episodes. Yeah. Um, so the story missions, you get, uh, <clears throat> you get ranked. So you get ranked based on how stealthy you were. If an uh, enemy notices you, you get minus points if you kill somebody. You don't get minus points, but you have, like, so you have, like, 100,000 points. Mm-hmm. If you kill if you kill one person or 20 people, whatever, you get minus 5,000 points. Not per person, just in general. Mm-hmm. Um... There's, like, perfect stealth, which is no alerts, no no kills. There's no enemy alerts, no enemy combat positions, stuff like that. Yeah. There's also an accuracy bonus. There's a, a marking bonus, which, like, you can mark people by looking at them with your telescope, mm-hmm. and it marks them. Um, and at the end of every story mission, it gives you a rank. Again, E through S++. Mm. Um, at the end of each side mission, there's nothing. So... The, you get more points in story missions if you do it completely stealthy, mm-hmm. right? Story, side missions, literally, you can just kill everybody if you want. Like, I've gotten to the point now where I'm only looking for people that have A stats, at least. Um, so if I go to, like, a a side bunker, and there's people there that, there's, like, one guy there that has A. An A in combat, or an A in intel, or an A in R&D. I'll mark him with on my map so I can watch where he goes, and everybody else will have like E's and D's. Mm-hmm. Literally, just kill everybody else and pick up the guy with the E, or pick up the guy with the A, knock him out, and Fulton him up, and then he's part of my crew. Mm-hmm. It's real cool. Get you stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> the locations are super dynamic; like they're completely different from each other. So, do they? Like, I know with some games, uh, the style is very distinct everywhere you go. Like, I think Skyrim and the Gray. Everything's like gray in Skyrim. Uh-huh. Do you feel like it's a like vibrant, like the feel of the terrain? Um, is does it have like one like a general ambiance, or is it very distinct? I think it's realistic. Realistic, like okay. Afghan. You would expect browns, sandstorm, like sand colors. Yeah. Um, there are some trees there, but once you go to Africa, it's jungly. Like there's trees everywhere, mm. so it's really green and lush. Where Africa is just rocky and mm-hmm. deserty, so there's there's a very big difference. Okay, uh, which I really like. Um, uh, Afghan has sandstorms that come in. Africa has rainstorms, which doesn't affect visibility. Yeah, but it affects the noise that you make. Mm-hmm. So you can't like run at someone head on, or you can run at them from behind and knock them out. Mm. Um, there's a big emphasis on CQC, they call it, which is close quarters combat. Okay, um, it's like. You can knock people out, you can grab them, you can throw them over your shoulder, all this other stuff. Yeah. Um, and because it's Metal Gear Solid, eventually you get to a point where there's Metal Gear, which is the robots, the mechanized robots. Can you fight those in close quarters? <sighs> um, not really, because they're like giant Gundam. The only one I've ever seen is like a giant Gundam. Again, mm-hmm. I'm only 21% the way through, oh, which is what shoot is. I've been, I've played it for a long time, it's a really long game. Yeah. Um... But there's there's small ones, there's big ones. They're not like AI where like they're human sized robots. Yeah, they're, they're like much larger. They're much larger, or they're like mechanical vehicles. So they're like ATSTs and ATATs from Star Wars. Yeah, that's a good reference. There you go. Um, the game itself is getting a little bit of criticism because there's less than four hours of cutscenes in it, mm. which based on previous Metal Gear Solid games, it has been... It's not very much. Like, the Guns of the Patriots, like I said, has like 16 hours of cutscenes, or something like that. Okay. Um, this game itself is more story-driven based on your experiences in the game. Mm-hmm. So, like, you have this Sony Walkman on you, because, again, it's in the 80s. Right. So you have all this old technology. Yeah. And you'll... Uh, Ocelot, or Miller, one of the two, Kaz Miller or Ocelot, who was at Mother Base, kind of conducting how you go about stuff they'll send you cassette tapes about what's going on in Mother Base, what's going on in Afghanistan, what's going on in Africa. Gives you backstory about all these things. So it's brief, like briefings. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
So it's not there's not it's not a cutscene for that. Mm. But you listen to it. So all the story is there, it's just not in cutscene form. Mm. But it's also really cool because you can go through an outpost and say there's like they have a stereo. Yeah. Music will be playing on the stereo. So like the final countdown. I just found the final countdown. <laughs> you go to the stereo, you take this cassette tape out of the stereo, yeah. and then you can listen to it whenever you want. That's awesome. But it's also cool because if there's music playing, mm-hmm. then obviously there's noise, and the enemies that, can't hear you as well. There it is. So the AI in this game is, I think it's really good. Yeah. Like, they make funny mistakes sometimes. Like, I saw a video of there was one enemy soldier walking in the road, mm-hmm. and there was another guy driving a truck, and for yeah. some reason they didn't see each other, Yeah. and the guy just ran right over the other guy, <laughs> and sent him flying, and the other the nice. driver... Got out of the truck. He's like, oh no, I hit this guy. And then he runs over to make sure he's okay. Oh, he did? Yeah. Interesting. It's not like he ignored that he, he ran, ran over, over. Right. But he realized that something happened, that this guy was hurt, and he got out. He's like, oh, this is cool. Um, you also get this, uh, I guess it's kind of a spoiler alert, mm-hmm. but you find out really early in the game. The reason it's called the Phantom Pain, one of the reasons is because you lose uh, your left arm at the very beginning of the game. Um, so you get this mechanized robotic arm, very similar to Luke Skywalker, how he gets his. Oh, wow. So many Star Wars references. To yeah, right? Um, and eventually, like, you can upgrade to do things. Like, you have better mobility with it. Uh, there's an upgrade to where it can be, like, electrically charged. So when you hit somebody with it, they get stunned, like, electrocuted. Not get killed, but they get stunned. Like a taser? Yeah. Um. I like that. Uh, do you, going back to the, the cassette tapes. Okay. Uh, a lot of times I feel games that have, like, audio messages that have storylines in it can get kind of clunky, and where, where like, I don't even use it, or it, like, interrupts the main storyline, or, like, it'll play and then something will happen and it'll stop. How, how do you feel it blends in with the game? Um, at the end of some missions, they'll be like, hey, you need to come back to Mother Base to do something, mm-hmm. to upgrade this one thing. Yeah. Um, and then once you get back to Mother Base, they'll give you, like three or four cassette tapes. And again, cassette tapes are just briefings. Yeah. And I've never seen a cassette tape more than like four and a half minutes. Most of them are like a minute and a half. Okay. So really short briefings, but you get a lot of information. Okay. Like, there are cassette tapes about why Russia is in Afghanistan. There are cassette tapes about why, what's going on in Africa. Yeah. Um, uh, how easy is it to access them? Do you have to like pause the game and go through a menu to get to them? Or no, there's is there, like a quick button to it? You, the whole, there's a big premise behind the game, it's called your iDroid, mm-hmm. which I think is funny because it's iPhone and Android mixed together, but it essentially your iDroid <laughs> is, there's three tabs. The first, the front tab is your map, the map of your area. Yeah. So you use that all the time. Mm-hmm. The tab to your left is like where you manage everybody that comes into Mother Base. Yeah. So you manage your private army. You also manage your resources because you pick up raw resources outside in the in the world, you pick up diamonds, which is a your gross domestic product. The game is based off the fact that Mother Base is its own country, mm-hmm. so you pick up all this stuff and you raise your gross domestic product, and you have that money to spend on things. Mm-hmm. Um, so on, on the left tab, you have R and D, so you make new weapons, you make new stuff. You have the cardboard box in it, like you do in all the Metal Gear <laughs> Solid games. Yeah. So you can make new cardboard boxes. Um, R&D, you, have, you can c- control where people go in the staff. You can upgrade Mother Base, all that stuff. That's on the left. Yeah. On the right is you call for a helicopter to pick you up. You call for, like, an airstrike. You call for, um, you eventually get, like, a your own private military corp yeah. that you can send out on missions. Nice. And then when they finish like the side missions. Quests. Yeah. That you're not, you're not in charge of. They do it by themselves. Yeah. Um, then you get GMP off of that and you get materials and you get recruits. There's also, that's also where you get the cassette tapes. Mm-hmm. So it's really just, it's all with the touchpad too. It's really cool. Cause left on the touchpad is just pause the game. Yeah. Just pause it. Right on the touchpad brings up your iDroid. Yeah. Which is the map, which is everything else. And on the right side, it's, you touch your iDroid, you hit R1 to go to the right side. You go like almost all the way down to cassette tapes. And then from there, you get to choose what cassette tape to listen to. Okay. Really easy. It's not like. Some games, like, you can only get these things at the main menu. Right. And it, it gets kind of annoying. I, I like that it seems to be very functional. Literally, the only time I've had to go to the main menu is when the game got an update. Hmm. Um, but that's also kind of a testament to the PS4. Because the PS4 has that standby mode, where if you enter standby mode on your PS4, when you turn it back on again, it's yeah. 
load you up exactly where you ended. Nice. So with Metal Gear Solid all the time, I'll get tired or need to stop playing. I'll just lay down in the grass somewhere. Yeah. Turn uh, my PS4 okay. off, turn it back on, and I'll still be in the grass and no one has seen me. That's awesome. This is real cool. I like that. It's real. I mean, Ed, I know you had a bad taste with Ground Zero, right. but this game is legit well, good. The, your, your conversation makes you want to try it. Pick it out. We might. This game might last me until November. All right. See, that's. I'm guessing The Witcher Three is going to take me all the way there because I've already put uh, over 20 hours into it, and I feel like I barely scratched the surface. Yeah. Um, uh, and the rate at which I'm playing it, I, I can't devote a whole lot of time to it. Usually it's in just like a couple hours at a time, like two, two or three. Um, so I feel like it's going to last me until November, which is always the best month for gaming because you always get all the huge releases right before Christmas. Yep. Uh, so excited. I think, I think we've talked about that too. Fallout 4 coming out. Black Ops 3 is Black coming Ops out. Black Ops 3 is coming out. I think Battle the new coming out. Need for Speed is coming out. New Need for Speed is coming out. Which should be good because it's, it's, it's like Underground 2 and mm-hmm. Most Wanted, which was the most popular games. Mm-hmm. However, back to Metal Gear. Yes. Like, Matt, Metal Gear. Um, the effect. side missions are actually really addictive. Really? Like you have, oh, on the right on the right tab you have mm-hmm. mission list and you have your side mission list. Yeah. Um, in your side mission list, there's, like, you do one, and then it'll be like, eliminate this heavy infantry, number one. You do that one, and then it'll unlock, eliminate this heavy infantry, number two. Yeah. So it just unlocks, and unlocks, and unlocks. Mm-hmm. I haven't done a lot of story missions just because I keep doing all the side missions. Really? Which, I'm kind of a completist that way. Like, I don't want the side missions to, to still be there when I do story missions. Yeah. But it also gets you, you don't really get experience, but you get that GMP. Yeah. You get... You Fulton guys, which then raises that skill at Mother Base, hmm. which then you can do R and D or get better support or whatever. So you get a, there's a benefit to doing side quests beyond storyline or yeah anything. Like and that. there's been one or two uh, side missions that when you do them, mm. it goes to a story mission. Oh, nice. So like in the middle of the side mission, it'll be a story mission. Oh, so you get to expand on the story if you do the side missions. Is that what you're saying? Uh, there's two that I can think of that happen. Or, like, there's a side mission that's, like, go to this place and rescue this one guy. Yeah. Or find out what's going on with one guy. You get there, and then right when you get there, it goes into story mode. Nice. And it's, like, and it turns out that the guy you need to rescue or spy on then needs something else. So you do that for him. Whatever. Mm. Which then progresses the story. Very cool. Um, yeah, rankings, Afghanistan. Um, I, it's an open, it's a stealth game, essentially. I mean, it is a stealth game. But there's also an aspect to where you can, like, run and gun. Mm-hmm. Not very well, because you don't have that much health. Yeah. But I also run around with a silenced assault rifle, a silenced sniper rifle, yeah. and a stun submachine gun, which mm-hmm. is, like, rubber pellets at people. You can nice. shoot them in the head, they die. Or they don't die, but they, they get stunned automatically. Down. Yeah. Um, but you can also get, like, rocket launchers. And LMGs. Shoot. So, like, I'm not necessarily running around with a run and gun class. I'm running around with a stealth class. Right. Uh... Can't, do you think you can beat the game running and gunning? Yeah, probably. Like, can you just ignore the stealth? Yeah. Um, I think the best way to play it would be to do a little stealth first, because each each little base camp, enemy yeah. base camp, has, like, they have anti-air radar, so your helicopter can't get in, but you have the opportunity to blow that up. Like, you have C4. So you can sneak, go to the anti-air radar, put C4 on it, mm-hmm. which you don't need to detonate right away. There's also uh, radios. Like giant radio satellites that you can sneak up to and you destroy all those, they don't have any outside communication. Yeah. You can also go to there's like a at each base there's like a communication hub. Just destroy that in general and they can't talk to anyone out out you can't they can't get reinforcements. Good. Um so if you go and you put C four on all those things and you scout out all these people and you mark the ones that you want to fold and you mark the ones that you want to kill, yeah, blow all this stuff up, they can't get reinforcements, and you can go loud. Kill everybody, knock out people that you want to fold them, mm. fold them up. And it's you're gonna go. So there's. A, it seems like you can do a lot of prep work mm-hmm. uh, and a lot of planning, which makes sense with a stealth game. Yeah, I like that. I, I definitely feel like it's an espionage game. Like, well, I maybe mean, not espionage. I, I don't think you're a spy, but I guess stealth is the best way to say it. Of saying it, but so you, you have mercenary group. You have your own island, basically. Well, it's a oil rig. It's like a mechanical island. It's like a mechanical There's also this one aspect I didn't touch on. When you first started the game, uh, your guy has been in a coma, so he used to know all these languages. 
but he had some problem remembering things, so he doesn't know Russian anymore. Mm. You, one of your first missions is going to find a Russian to English interpreter. You follow him up, and then you can intel- interrogate everybody, and you know what they're saying. Yeah. Because if you interrogate beforehand, they, just, they speak Russian, you don't understand. Yeah. So there's like an in-depth like that, yeah. which I think is kind of cool. I like that. Yeah. It's a little bit realistic. Well, where I have to get an interpreter. I guess knowing all the languages, getting in a coma for nine months, or nine years, and then coming back and expecting to start your own country is kind of like... Not realistic, but we're talking about video games, so it's okay. The game itself is super fun. I love it. I'm having so much fun. People have called it a masterpiece. Uh, really? The only problem I've had with it so far is just that <laughs> sometimes there's no end to side missions. Like I said, you mm-hmm. do one, you get number two unlocked, you do number three unlocked. Sometimes I just want to do story missions, but I can't. I physically can't do that until all the side missions I've done. But that's a personal thing. Yeah, that could be rough. I... Uh, I'm in a similar situation with The Witcher. Um, in the region that I'm at, I, there's so much to do. There's uh-huh. so many places to explore. There's so many side quests. And I, and I I don't think I'm a, always a completist, if that's the term for yeah. it. Uh, I usually try and do as much as I can. Uh, what is that? Oh, what is going on? <laughs> what is this? All right fixed it um <laughs> that's random uh but so i don't always 100 percent and i actually don't 100 percent mini games i get usually i get pretty close but you finish a story at least i always finish a story but there's always like there's always like assassin's creed find all these two yeah seriously the, i assassin's creed 2 i got like 95 percent done i had one achievement left and it was fine 200 feathers and i was like i'm not okay. going through these cities and doing feathers it is not worth it to me so that's what I mean. Like I, I usually do all the stuff that's significant, uh, and a lot of times I'll do even the non-significant stuff, stuff if it has like a good reward. But um, I guess as I get, I've gotten older, I've done less and less of that. I kind of just focus on the story more. Yeah, we have less time now. We have less time now. So, but what I like about these side missions is that they're done really quick, especially if you like because you don't get rated on them. Yeah, like I said, you can mark people, kill everybody else, and fault on the guy, and you're done. Hmm. Um, they're not lengthy side missions where you have to go here, go here, go here, go here. The only the only problem is that the the landscape is so large <clears throat> that sometimes if you don't have D-Horse, you have another buddy with you. It takes yeah. you a long time to go from place to place. But you can always call in your helicopter helicopter and go back up to, like, it's your, like, aerial command. Yeah. And then you, you then helicopter in somewhere else. So it's not that long. Um, well, sometimes, like, one side mission will be here, and then on the other completely side of the other map is another side mission. However, there is this thing, it's it's like a delivery route, so mm-hmm. like, every, most major bases have like a truck delivery station, and once you go up to it, you can hold circle and you get an invoice for that, yeah. and if you sit on the delivery station in your cardboard box, a truck will come by and pick you up like your cardboard box, and it'll <laughs> deliver you to any other delivery point. That's a fun way to do fast travel. Right, so it's like a fast travel like that. You can't just do it from like your pause menu, you have to go to a base, you have to unlock all these places by going to these specific places. Yeah. Um, so that's faster than using your helicopter. But your helicopter completely restocks your ammo and stuff. Oh, that's nice. But you can also call in air support. So, like, you can drop ammo and silencers and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Also, your silencers break, which adds another level. Oh. So, like, if you shoot your silence gun, like, gen- the most I've seen is if you shoot a whole clip of silence, the next clip, you won't, the silence will be broken. Wow. That makes sense? That's pretty, so, like, I feel like that's pretty fast. If there's Well, if there's 31 rounds in a clip, you get 31 silence shots before. You have to get a new I mean, you, you can reload. Right. Um, but they're, there's a, they only last so long. Um, but generally you try to get as close to people and you CQC them into submission instead of shooting them. Huh. That's like a whole other layer. Yeah. So that's fun. I mean, I'm, en- I'm enjoying it a lot. I've been playing, a lot of the story missions are anywhere between like a half an hour to like an hour long. That's how long it takes me to scout out everything. Yeah. But you can say I play slow. Well, I think that's okay. It's nice to actually experience it. Um, there's a there's a there's some jokes between the guys, like the guys in the game. Mm. Like you, when you your your telescope has a an, uh, a microphone on it. Yeah. So like when you look at something, you can hear what they're saying. Whatever I can't remember what that's called, but you know you can listen to them and sometimes they just talk about funny things and it's funny to hear Japan's take on western culture yeah because they put it in 
with their guys. That's funny. But I like that. There's some little Easter eggs and stuff. Cool. That's what I that's what I've been doing a lot, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. Metal Gear Solid, Phantom Pain. Talked a little bit about Star Wars. Hearthstone, still playing that. I have to pee really bad, so we're probably going to end this right now. Or soon. That's funny, because we just had a break. An hour ago. 50 minutes and 18 seconds. Alright, well... uh, You ended the last one on your pee break, so that's true. I guess it's your turn. Uh, Yeah, so that's that's our podcast today. So hopefully uh, you guys enjoy it. This is the part two of two. Part two, uh, number five. Next week. I think next week. Next week, Tammy Hanks is coming on. Tammy Hanks will be our guest star next week. Uh, she will be working on her new movie. Oh, here we go. And not Toy Story. Let me but, grab you this shovel here. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and dig this hole. Yeah, all right, well, thanks for listening, guys. Have a good one.